Hello everyone, this is Juneet here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this interesting session on Transformers. So without any further delay, let's take a look at today's agenda. We'll start this session by having an overview about deep learning and its implementation. Moving ahead, we shall see how sequential data can be processed using deep learning and the improvement that we have seen in the models over the years. And finally, we'll end this session by talking about Transformers and some of the best state-of-the-art language models for 2021. So now, what exactly is deep learning, right? Well, before we go and understand what is deep learning, let me quickly walk you through the chronology over here. Starting off with AI, right? AI or artificial intelligence is basically an entire thing, okay? So what I'm trying to say here is, AI is an area of computer science that emphasizes the creation of intelligence within the machine to work and react like human beings. In short, here we are trying to have a capability of machines to imitate the intelligence of a human behavior. Then we have machine learning, all right? Machine learning is basically a science of getting computers to act by feeding them up previous data. Here, previous data can also be referred to as historical data. So deep learning is a subset of machine learning and here we make use of something called as neural networks. We see neural networks are the set of algorithms and techniques which are modeled in accordance with human brain. And neural networks are designed to solve complex and advanced machine learning problems. All right, so what exactly is deep learning, right? Well, deep learning is a part of a broad family of machine learning methods, which are based on learning data patterns in opposition to what a machine learning algorithm does. In machine learning, we have algorithms for a specific task, okay? Here, the deep learning algorithm can be supervised, semi-supervised or unsupervised. As I mentioned earlier, deep learning is inspired by human brain and how it perceives information through interaction of neurons. All right, so let us now see what exactly can we do with deep learning, okay? But before we go there, so why should we choose deep learning for, you know, various tasks? So the big advantage of using deep learning is that we can extract more number of features. And when we have more number of features and when we can work at the same time with huge amount of data, we can perceive an object like a human being does. What I'm trying to say over here is, like if you want to perform a classification task between pen and a pencil, You'll obviously know as a human being, you'll know the difference because you have looked at a pen and a pencil continuous number of times. And now when you're trying to actually classify it, you can do it with ease. Okay. And the reason for this is because you know the features of a pen and you know the features of a pencil. Okay. Similarly, this is how deep learning works. More the data you feed, more the dimensions it can analyze, more the dimensions it can learn. All right. So as I've already mentioned, one of the most popular application of deep learning is image classification. And when it comes to image classification, it can be something as simple as classifying between two different animals to something as complicated as, you know, hiding data or trying to run uh, automated cars using classification tasks. Okay. All right. So next type of application using deep learning is using on sequential data. Sequential data basically refers to something like time series data or having to understand natural language. So the reason why we call it sequential data is because here the previous word or the previous feature is dependent upon the next feature okay so as you can see over here we have what time is it right so if i just say it is like oh here what time is and it are basically features right and in order for you to make an analogy or to understand obviously you have to know what has happened in the past so in order to do this we use something called as rnns okay and there are various versions of rnn that go around in order to overcome the disadvantages which we'll look in in some time all right, so moving on to the next application that is GANs. GANs, which stands for Generative Adversarial Network, is an unsupervised part of a deep learning application. Some of the common applications which you can see in recent days is nothing but deep fakes and many more. Finally, coming down to performing classification and regression tasks using multi-layer perceptron. If you remember, or if you're well versed with machine learning, in order to perform classification in machine learning, we had algorithms like decision tree, random forest, or something very simple as linear regression or logistic regression. But let me tell you what, when we try to perform classification using MLP or multi-layer perceptron, we get a very high accuracy even compared to SVM and decision trees. All right, so now that we know what exactly is deep learning and why we use it, let's now stream down to understand how can we process natural language data using RNNs. So what are RNNs, right? Well, RNN basically stands for recurrent neural network. And we usually use this in order to deal with a sequential data. Sequential data can be something like a time series data or a textual data of any format. So why should one use RNN, right? Well, this is because there's a concept of internal memory here. 
RNN can remember important things about the input it has received, which allows them to be very precise in predicting what can be the next outcome. So this is the reason why they are performed or preferred on a sequential data algorithm. Okay, and some of the examples of sequential data can be something like time series, speech, text, financial data, audio, video, weather, and many more. Although RNN were the state of the art algorithm for dealing with sequential data, they come up with their own drawbacks. And some of the popular drawbacks over here can be like due to the complication or the complexity of the algorithm, the neural network is pretty slow to train. And as there are a huge amount of dimensions here, the training is very long and difficult to do. Okay. Apart from that, the most decisive feature for RNN or for the improvement in RNN is that of a vanishing gradient. What this vanishing gradient is, is that, you know, when we go deeper and deeper into our neural network, the previous data is lost. This is because of a concept called as vanishing gradient. And due to this, we cannot work on a large or a longer sequence of data. Okay. To overcome this, we came up with some new or upgrades to the current recurrent neural networks or RNNs. Starting off with bidirectional recurrent neural network. You see, bidirectional recurrent neural network connect two hidden layers of opposite direction into the same output. With this form of generative deep learning, the output layer can get information from past, future states simultaneously. So as you can see here, we have two layers over here. And as they are bidirectional, what happens is when the algorithm feels that it is kind of losing its gradients or the previous data, it can go back and get the data from the past. So why do we need bidirectional recurrent neural network? Well, bidirectional recurrent neural network duplicates RNN processing chain so that the input process both forward and reverse time order, thus allowing bidirectional recurrent neural network to look into future context as well. The next one is long short term memory. Long short term memory or also sometimes referred to as LSTM is an artificial recurrent neural network architecture used in the field of deep learning. Unlike standard feed forward neural network, LSTM has a feedback connections. It can not only process single data point, but also the entire sequence of data. So as you can see here from what I'm trying to say is with LSTM or long short term memory, it has something like, you know, we can feed a longer sequence compared to what it was with bidirectional RNN or RNNs. So why is LSTM better than RNN? We can say that when we move from RNN to LSTM, we are introducing more and more control over the sequence of the data that we can provide. The LSTM gives us more control ability and there's better results. All right, so the next type of recurrent neural network is the gated recurrent neural network or also referred to as GRUs. You see GRU is a type of recurrent neural network that is in certain cases is advantageous over long short term memory. GRU makes use of less memory and also is faster than LSTM. But thing is LSTMs are more accurate while using longer data sets. I'm sure by now you might have got a hint about the trend that has led to the improvement, right? So the trend over here is, you know, the model should be capable of remembering and taking in on a longer input sequence. The game changer part for the sequential data was developed when we came up with something called as transformers. And this paper was something which is based on a concept called as attention is everything. All right, so let's take a look at this. The paper attention is all you need introduces a null architecture called as transformers like LSTM transformers is an architecture for transforming one sequence into another while helping other two parts that is encoders and decoders. But it differs from previously described sequence to sequence model because it does not work like GRUs. Okay, so it does not implement uh, recurrent neural networks. Recurrent neural network until now were one of the best ways to capture the timely dependence on a sequence. However, the team presenting this paper that is attention is all you need prove that an architecture with only attention mechanism does not use RNN can improve its result in translation task and other NLP task. One of the best examples for transformers is Google's bird. So what exactly is this transformer, right? You see here we have encoder on the top and decoder on the bottom. Both encoder and decoder are comprised of modules that can stick on to the top of each other multiple times. So what happens here is the inputs and outputs are first embedded into n dimension space since we cannot use this directly. So we obviously have to encode our inputs whatever we are providing here. One slight but important part of this model is the positional encoding of different words. Since we have no recurrent neural network that can remember how sequence are fed into the model, we need to somehow give every word or part of our sequence a relative position since a sequence depends on the order of the elements. Okay. These positions are added to the embedded representation of each words. 
All right, so this was the brief about transformers. So let us now move ahead and see some of the popular language models that are available in the market. All right, so let us now start off by understanding OpenAI's GPT-3. The successor to GPT and GPT-2 is the GPT-3 and is one of the most controversial pretend models by OpenAI. The large scale transformer based language model has been trained on 175 billion parameters, which is 10 times more than any previous non sparse language model. The model has been trained to achieve strong performance on many NLP dataset, including task rate translation, answering questions, as well as several other tasks. Then we have Google's BERT. BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers. It is a pre trained NLP model which is developed by Google in 2018. With this, anyone in the world can train either their own question answering module with up to 30 minutes on a single cloud TPU or few hours using single GPU. The company then released this showcasing the performance of 11 NLP tasks, including very competitive Stanford dataset questions. Unlike other language models, BERT has only been pre trained on 250 million words of Wikipedia and 800 million words of Book Corpus and has been successfully used as a pre trained model in deep neural network. According to researchers, BERT has achieved 93% accuracy, which has surpassed any previous language models. Next, we have ELMO. ELMO, also known as Embedding for Language Model, is a deep contextualized word representation that models syntax and semantic words as well as their logistic context. The model developed by Allen LLP has been pre trained on a huge text corpus and learn functions from bidirectional models, that is, by LM. ELMO can easily be added to their existing models, which drastically improves the features of functions across vast NLP problems, including answering questions, textual sentiment, and sentiment analysis. All right, guys, with this, we come to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any further queries, please do mention them in a the comment box below. Until next time, goodbye and take care.